Um, hello, uh, just as an introduction, um, my name is Hannah. I am a digital missioner. I work with Southwest Baptist Association, East Midlands Baptist Association, and I've just started a very exciting uh, missional videography project. Um, I say looking at Hayley if I'm allowed to start talking about it yet, um, but uh, very much about digital and how we can use social media technology and digital assets to um, sort of grow the kingdom. Uh, I am also studying an MA in digital theology at Spurgeons. And if you're on social media, please do find me um, either at the Hannah FH or FH Digital, which is my kind of work accounts. Um, and that is a picture of myself, my husband and our rescue French bulldog, Fabian. Um, so um, digital discipleship. I thought I'd have a sort of a little bit of a reflection look first at um, kind of where we are, uh, especially kind of thinking about the last two years as well. It's a really kind of downer thing to say, but the numbers of church attendance and sort of people who identify as practicing Christians are going down. And I don't think that is just because of um, digital and it's stopping people from coming. It's sort of probably even prior um, sort of over the last few decades, numbers were going down. And then the last two years significantly changed how we did church in terms of the practice, not the sort of the body of Christians, um, but it really changed how we um, see, how we connect with other people and how we sort of identify um, ourselves as sort of the body of Christ and, and our families of churches. The church being, yeah, sorry, I'm going to flip between the two descriptions. The Sunday services are competing um, with so many other things now. So work, people, you know, society and cultures change. We're now working sort of on weekends. So you're competing with work, football or sports clubs for the kids, you know, brunch with friends who you haven't seen, especially as we're coming out of the pandemic and you're able to go out um, for those of you who aren't isolating um, you know, spending time with family and so much more so church has to attending church on a Sunday is is has got so many other things it, it's sort of trying to attract from um compared to sort of 50 100 years ago when oh, the only thing that was open was church on a Sunday and for many um uh, there are a lot of people who say that building um sort of an online community or having an online presence will hurt how church um grows or is it sort of hurt the numbers but I truly believe that um, if you build an online community and do it well and do it consistently it will help the church to grow and not just in um, sort of the traditional ways of numbers but actually in the strength of um, the Christians attending. So um, I do love a GIF as well. So there's, um, there are several sort of uh, GIFs in here. Um, I always think this is funny because even um, sort of back in Jesus's time, there probably still were sort of miscommunications and misunderstandings in the gospel being told. So if we look back um, in how people communicated, so Jesus, he spoke from the hills, he spoke directly to people. He spoke to a few people and that was spread out from their mouth, from his mouth to their mouth and onwards. Then Paul would write um, letters to the churches. So he wrote to churches or to communities that he knew. He wrote to the people that sometimes he'd visit, but he wouldn't always. Uh, he wouldn't always go and see them directly, but he often would talk about wanting to come and see you. But in the meantime, here are my thoughts, my reflections, my advice. I then go to monks, um, sort of several hundreds and sort of even thousand years later, who wrote on manuscripts. And so these were able to be produced, um, not necessarily quicker, but actually they could be more widely distributed. And also it allowed for people to start learning themselves. Then uh, about sort of 500 years ago, we had the printing press. And so books and papers were able to be um, created and the Bible was officially sort of printed and people were able to have it within their own hands. And then over the last kind of 50 years, you've seen the advancement of technology and therefore radio, TV, people have been able to reach further than ever before. But it was very expensive and very limited and it was very broadcast. So you didn't have that communication and that relationship that you would often, that you do have now. 
So now are we in kind of a digital reformation? Are we sort of in this new time of where the ability to share the gospel is not just in a few, the hands of a few, but in the hands of everyone? And the responsibility for everyone who is online to, uh, who's a Christian to share it out. So even though um, the medium uh, has changed, the message still stays the same. We still have a job to go out and make disciples of all nations and sort of a, um, a phrase for me that I frequently say is the gospel sharing in the 21st century, the great commission that we have in the 21st century. Um, so what is discipleship? So what would be kind of um, quite cool for me because I Googled it and um, <laughs> wanted to get kind of an official definition. It would just be interesting to know kind of what your, um, what your I suppose, understanding, what your definition of discipleship actually is. Now, um, these kind of four uh, suggestions were from a Ken Benjamin article. Um, and I quite like the fact that it's not sort of, we, we all have a different understanding. And so therefore actually how we do it can be quite different. Um, and he suggests that, is it the sort of patterns and disciplines that we have as Christians? Is it the sort of just the experience after conversion? Is it just a one-off course that you do? Um, or is it the journey of faith as Christians and um, followers of Jesus? Um, so it's sort of, um, I'm going kind of by the latter, um, but there's sort of all aspects of it are, um, uh, are kind of inclusive um, within the definition. Um, so why is this important? Um, you know, why, sh why should we be thinking about digital when we talk about sort of uh, growing disciples and, and, and growing as Christians? So as I said already, um, gospel sharing in the 21st century, um, it's the way that life is now, you know, sort of our culture and our habits have changed and the church needs to be there. And Jesus didn't wait until a Sunday um, in the temple to, to share and speak and minister to or discuss and actually just be with his disciples. Um, he, he was there all day, well, not all days, um, but, you know, he would spend sort of any day of the week, at night, mornings, he would have meals with them, his, his friends and families, and those who were interested in what he had to say could reach him at all times, um, not just sort of out, uh, for an hour and a half on a Sunday. And um, it's not about being online being the only way forward. It is an additional form of ministry and a fantastic tool for missional outreach. And, and one of the things that a lot of people um, who are not too keen on digital think that very often that people think, oh, we just want to stop everyone from sort of going into church. Um, but it's not about that. It's, it's not sort of one or the other, but it's an and. It's an additional way of doing um, sort of it's an extension of um, sort of church and, and Christian life. Um, and as I said already, it will help church growth, not just in the numbers, but in the strength and depth, depth of Christians already in your church and adding to that. Online isn't about preventing those from coming and sort of in person um, sort of coming into the building. Um, but for those already at church, it's about keeping the spirit of the family together with the challenges that not only COVID has brought re over recent years, but general life that can prevent us from being together. Um, it's also important for those who are new and about how we welcome people and getting an idea of sort of who we are as a church family um, and connecting again if you've moved away or come back or you just want to, to find a new church. Um, and, and it creating a space that um, is engaging and enticing and sort of relationally attractive um, that people want to then come on site. And so often uh, language and the behaviours and things that we do um, have been off-putting to people especially if they've, they've just become a Christian and they've not grown up with it um, and so I think that language is something really important that we do need to reflect upon so our Christianese can be very confusing and you know if you're saying oh the here's the blood of Christ if someone doesn't quite know what that means actually that can be quite intimidating um, 
so understanding actually how people how people understand what we're talking about and um, having that space that uh, allows people to learn um, is, is another way of using online. Um, so I, I said uh, a minute ago, sort of in person, in air quotes, because I think as well, um, the pandemic has shown us that church doesn't need to be just in a building. It's it's how where people are gathered anyway, it, but it's the individuals, but also people can gather online. So for me, I use the um, sort of the, the language of online being something that we're doing online, um, but then it, it still means that we're, we're in person, I'm talking and someone can respond to me straight away, you know, we can have a conversation, we're still in person, we'd maybe just not gathered that we can kind of, you know, shake hands or high five. And um, so, so I say on site when I talk about going into a building, and that could be a church building, that could be a cafe, that could be someone's house, it's still in person. Um, you know, we're still face to face. Those, those are still terms that we have both online and on site. Um, also, even though I, I won't really touch on this, um, sort of thinking about how we say online church and church online. So if a church, if it's an online church, that is, means it's probably predominantly based around it being an online experience. Um, whereas church online um, often is an element of kind of just live streaming. Um, but I think that sort of just reflecting upon language and how you understand certain things are really important sort of as we go forward. Um, um, it's also online can help if someone doesn't understand that language, they can, it's a lot easier to flag something up and, and comment on a post or say, oh, I didn't quite understand what you meant by that, rather than probably forgetting about it. If someone mentions it halfway through a service and then trying to kind of, um, flag it up or, or sort of just ask more about it uh, after the service and um, we also need to do think about the um, people um, for whom Sunday is just not possible um, sort of um, not just about um, uh, culturally so if you're working or um, have other commitments but actually thinking about availability and disability and accessibility so actually what are the things that might prevent people and um, I guess maybe not so much in Baptist buildings but it's particularly um, more Anglican um, buildings having been, having been in quite a few myself where they do not have toilets sort of or very often in the main buildings and actually um, you know there's there's steps going up to them how accessible for someone who maybe need, has a wheelchair or you know just push chairs or actually are there things that prevent people from wanting to come in even if they could make it on a Sunday service and um, now I don't know the official number for it but something like Facebook is the biggest nation in the world or something like that I think I should have looked that up but you know um we're called to go out to all nations online as those new nations and so we should be out there we do have the responsibility to go online not just standing on a soapbox and shouting at people about Jesus but engaging encouraging and enabling the next generations of Christians to take their steps forward and even find new opportunities for ministry so just um sort of think about whilst um or you can please do share it in the chat that would be lovely um but just have a think about over not just over the pandemic even before if you were kind of very active online what content communities platforms or individuals have encouraged you what have you seen that's helped you um you know shouldn't we hope and work towards that every um piece of content we create it allow people whether they are you know Christians for their entire lives new Christians um, or, or sort of not even wanting to think about it but just so sort of maybe they're trying to they're starting to ask some questions shouldn't we think about our content being a, something that encourages them so, so kind of how do we do it and um, so the biggest thing to think about with online and, and, and like creating community um, even before kind of discipleship I think the biggest thing is about relationships um, you know it's called social media not broadcast um, media you know it's about having that community and that relationship with either um, yourself and another individual 
yourself and the group or the church and, and the groups and the individuals, but having that space of being able to talk to each other, being able to share um, and, and not just being spoken at and it being a very one-sided conversation. Um, creating the right atmosphere is really important. So creating a safe space where people feel welcomed, connected, supported and inspired is really um, important. A, a place where they want to come back. So again, something that sort of um, not just the, the draw of it being on social media, but actually it being something, a space where oh, I'm on Facebook, actually I really want to go into this group because this is where I feel really comfortable and welcomed. I mean, a place where people want to come back, they want to be with. Um, where possible a springboard for them to want to come um, in person and um, I will say a bit more about the actual individual groups themselves uh, or the individual platforms themselves in a bit but um, Nona Jones who works for kind of um, faith at Facebook and she's a, an American um, pastor as well and um, she has a really fantastic kind of house analogy for she's talking specifically about Facebook but where you're kind of um your front facing sort of in particular that Facebook of um, your page is very much the front of your house so you know if you've got a garden you know you say hi to people you might sort of how are you doing yeah great you might share a little bit of news but it's very kind of short brief you know you don't really know the people that well you've then got sort of then the groups and those kind of direct messaging spaces and um, we're thinking about other platforms and, and that is the kind of the kitchens and the living rooms of your house where you can have those more um, personal conversations. You can be a lot more um, vulnerable with the people that you're chatting with. And typically you don't let anyone into it, but you, you might make new friends and welcome them in for dinner. And therefore you, you start to share more with them, they share more with you. So think about how actually your, the different aspects of your platforms allow for those relationships to grow. Um, being inclusive, um, we need to make sure that as churches, we aren't creating these special clubs that only a select few are able to attend. Again, it's about thinking about language, but also actually in the technicality of joining. And so that if there is someone new to your on-site church, that actually, do they know that these things are going on? Do they know how to connect with you? If it's someone who's watching online and they really want to, um, connect with, um, a small group or, or a bible study that's going on actually how do they find out about that maybe you know you don't have to put all the zoom details up but actually just letting people what's what's going on and how how can they find out more and get more information about it and being authentic um again this is sort of not just for the churches but as us as individuals um as christians online um for churches there is a responsibility to lead individuals um and to sort of inspire but we also need to be truthful we shouldn't hide the challenges that we face. and and again it, it sort of not creating a, a, a separate space between your online and your on-site so that actually if people are joining online that when they come on site um for a sunday service or for something else that actually they feel that there is a link and there is a kind of flow of intention and um personality I suppose you, know, you don't want to be saying one thing online and then to, for to on site to say oh no we really don't agree with that and it being very kind of um disjointed in uh I don't want to say beliefs but sort of um the, the aspects different aspects within, within your church and your digital strategy so again of like thinking well how are we doing this online how are we going to engage and encourage and teach people this needs to really be included in your digital and social media strategy, because that will inform then what actually you're sharing and, and, and creating. So again, you know, how, how, how do we do this? Um, so one of the things to think about is reach. So are you on a good number of platforms and on the right ones? So it's not that everyone has to be on all platforms, but um, being able to be on as many as possible that is right for you um, but actually then what are the right ones for the people that you're trying to reach um, there's no point in if your church well no I can understand that there's a point in it but if you are quite a rural church and maybe your um, congregation is that of more um, 
retired age and um, unless you really feel a, um, a call to minister to younger people um, or you know so from, from a more international perspective you're unlikely to really want to be um, producing content um, and connecting with people through TikTok it'd be awesome and I would love to see it happen because um, I think it could be really cool um, but it's unlikely in the first instance that that is going to be the best way to go about so it's about understanding kind of not just from your congregation's point um, but in thinking about the people you want to reach but actually is there a way of um, utilizing it if you were to go in the kind of very opposite direction and um, uh, teaching obviously as part of kind of discipleship um, but are you offering plenty of resources, opportunities for discussions, directing towards other sites um, and really creating an opportunity and space for people to learn and grow? Whilst obviously, you know, you probably want to keep a lot of it within what the church is preaching on, but actually utilising other things that are being created. So from Baptist, uh, maybe other churches within your association. Um, uh, churches across or other associations across the country or even other resources from sort of um, churches or creators um, you know across the world actually being able to give these to people so it's not just um, you just only can learn it on a Sunday but actually here's something for us to learn throughout the week and this is from this um, this place and you know you can learn it in your own time you can read these things and we can talk about it um, within the Facebook group or we can have a Zoom and chat about it. So she are, you're offering people plenty of opportunities to, um, to learn and grow. Connection. So are, are you facilitating a space where people can gather um, and they want to talk to each other and they want to share? So again, that relational side is hugely important, but also can audiences connect with the content? So if you're talking about something um, um, uh, again, if it's something um, about being um, environmentally friendly, let's say, um, and, and actually we're going to talk about creation care or something like that, but you, it's in a very urban area that you live in, that actually if, you're, if, if the content being produced or the content that you're producing is very much about, here's what you can do in your garden, but likelihood is that actually that most of the people watching it or, or you're, that you're connecting with all live in um, you know, a block of flats or something, actually that's really hard um, for them to connect with the idea of you know, growing your own vegetables or, or whatever um, it might be but but sort of actually is the is the language again if you're talking in very um more um king james um version bible um quotes where actually it's very young audience actually is the, the unless you're teaching specifically on understanding the bible is there a bit of a disconnect again so it's connection both with between each other but also between the content we uh, within the Great Commission, you know, called to go out and make disciples. So that is it for each of us to do. And so are your audiences, are your congregations, are your church family able to grow? And not necessarily that they have to move on from the church, but are they able to move on um, and disciple others? Could they start their own Facebook group? Or can they disciple through their own platforms? Could they disciple in their own, you know, on-site lives whether that's at work or within childcare or parental care but actually is it are you allowing people to multiply within um their discipleship family um and again empowering so are you enabling the people so both as individuals so giving people the resources um as both individuals so are they doing one-on-one -on -one relationships that for online it's easier to do one-on-one -on -one, um and it's more personal because actually you see the face behind it. If I'm tweeting from Hannah um, and I'm messaging Haley, I know that or, that it's going to be Haley on the other line, and Haley knows that it's going to be me on the other line. Um, however, obviously you have a limited reach and a limited delivery um, because it's just me. Whereas as a church, um, whilst someone might not know it's my face all the time, um, which might be a bit off-putting because they just see a church name actually you can be more broader in what you talk about um, and you can reach more people because actually the, um, the church probably has a bit more um, of a local presence and people are more likely to engage more broadly with that 
you're obviously also in um, delivery and content creation you have more people able to um create and more people to get involved in um curating and creating but obviously yes limited collect connection um there we go so what do we actually do um so move it um which kind of uh, sounds like I'm saying that we should be dancing which would be cool um, but what can actually go online so think about if 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 we thought kind of like pre-online um what are the things that are happening what would you do um in discipleship um what what groups what courses would run um and what but what can actually go online so if, so sort of here's how maybe we would have done it here's how this works online but also here's how you know this is the platform this is the space how can we navigate or how can we fit this around what we already uh, what we want to do um, as well as what we what we're already doing so it could be prayer groups so that could be on zoom or or on video chats um but equally sort of prayer chains where um actually it's just more kind of messaging asking for prayer requests and even then updates and stuff worship and that could be either creating worship um say consuming worship but watching um, and experiencing worship i think we all found that zoom was not necessarily the best for um collective worship but that's not to say that it's not wonderful when being able to listen if one person's um you know one person is actually doing the music um and everyone else is on mute but actually you're able to join in um or, or just share kind of um share videos and things like that so so sort of within worship there's lots of potential bible studies and and not just a kind of right we've turned up at someone's house we're going to do a bible study and we're not going to talk about it for the rest of the week um you know you could you could have something on site and a gathering like that but then have a space throughout the rest of the week where it's an online space where people can go actually i've really been thinking about this because and i've had it before you read something say on a wednesday night thursday morning you're reflecting upon it and you go oh that's a really good question that's that's something i want to ask by the time the following wednesday comes around you've completely forgotten that question because life happens you've you know and you then are reading a whole new section and you forget to ask the question and it's not until you you know walking out to the car that you go oh that was the question that i had from last week but it's no longer relevant so if you've got something that maybe is on site or online on a on a wednesday it's actually thursday you can say has anyone got any questions actually what are people finding challenging what are people finding encouraging actually what doesn't make sense has anyone found a better version of this or has anyone found any um uh commentaries or something like that that can go along with it and actually then you create a richer experience throughout the rest of the week people are learning people are continuing to reflect upon it so that come a wednesday actually the, the come the following wednesday that they're then going oh actually you know this sort of i'm ready for this because we've been thinking about this and actually i've that sort of um you've got the car running already and um, by the time that the the, the following wednesday comes along Again, the same could be for sermon reflections. So creating a space um, where within the sermons or following the sermons that creating a space online that, that on the Monday, Tuesday, that you can ask questions, allow people to discuss um, and even have um, solely small groups online. I'm gonna speed up slightly because I am aware of the time. Um, make it engaging. So actually plenty of call to actions, you know, ask questions, create polls, ask for recommendations. Again, that relational thing. I've um so i'm quite an apple um geek i love apple stuff as does hayley um uh, hayley got some new bits last year and i sort of said well actually what is your feedback of this you know how are you finding this i wanted her recommendation so again you could ask within a um you know within a group oh i'm looking for a new study bible has anyone got any recommendations on that what are people finding people podcasts that you're really enjoying or finding very helpful to you know ask questions to get people to to engage back um have some fun i know that like very often that sounds the wrong thing to say within a church but i think jesus would have um you know been had a great sense of humor um, and i think we can't argue that god has a sense of humor if you look at the duckbill platypus and um, so i think that you know uh, having have fun you know ask bible trivia or 
um, have quizzes and things you know uh, loved a thing I think it was last Christmas or even then must have been the one year before um carol song guess the carol song or the, the christmas carol by the emojis and again it's getting people to think creatively um you know or, or even guess a hymn by um the uh emojis but but sort of you know get people to really think and actually it's sort of just being creative and, and having a bit of fun tell stories make it personal so again if it's something creating broadly across the church you know how can you get people to share their experiences of how you know how they came to faith why Jesus means something to them we've just had Easter so actually what does Easter mean to them what what is a sort of um you know the a, a big realization of actually how how huge a moment it is you know what was something that, that meant to me to them ask ask your congregation what they want to see do talk about how they want the groups to be again there's no point in you saying right we're going to do everything on zoom if actually people don't really want zoom they want a space where they can um be posed a question or posed a discussion topic and they come back to it in an hour or something so, you know maybe actually more asynchronous conversation is better um or the other way of just assuming that everyone wants to chat on facebook actually people would really value an hour on zoom or something so ask them what they want um, make it easy to understand the link between online and on site. So again, in terms of that kind of flow of language and behaviours and sort of practices, um, are you communicating what's happening between the two? So, you know, if you've got online on site services, are you saying, oh, we have these online groups that are happening here? Or it's, you know, it doesn't you don't have to commit every week, but we've got these things going on online. But equally, if you've got things online saying, if you're able to, if you're local, we would love for you to join us on site. Um, but no pressure, you know, you're equally as welcome and wonderful just staying on here. But make sure that the, the two are interlinked. Otherwise, then you end up having kind of two separate entities rather than sort of um, two sides of one space. That's not the right way of saying it, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, and also, I think in the in this new age, um, and and sort of new time of um opportunities um obviously for me saying i'm a digital missionary i think it's hugely important that people are given the chance to explore new ministries and so within your what what happens online um are there opportunities or could you create space new ministries for people so whether that could be digital missioners or digital champions virtual welcome team so if someone is really um you know really has a heart for welcoming someone but actually they're really struggling at the moment because um they've broken their leg um that actually they can't physically get to the church building but actually they could be online you know they could be on on youtube for the live stream or they could be manning a Facebook group and, and just really welcoming people and chatting and facilitating a conversation. Um, so I think, you know, understanding that actually it's not you who has to do it all. Could this be a new space for people to experiment or express a new um, new mi ministries um, or, and missional opportunities? Um, uh, so briefly. Um, where do we do this? Um, so obviously you've got social media, um, so Facebook, when with that got pages, groups, messengers, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, and many others. Um, you've then uh, got video, and, and I say these not as social media because you don't have that entirely relational aspect of it, but obviously YouTube and Vimeo. You've obviously got messaging spaces, so um, like WhatsApp signal or um, old school texting um video chat so to zoom teams facetime whatsapp video and again all you know it's not about only using one but understanding that actually the different the different um tools have sort of different purposes um and then the kind of the, the more classics um you know email um and even telephone because again not everyone's on social media but actually telephone call is, is equally um important um, and remember, um, just moving um, something from on-site to online or online to on-site won't work. Um, you know, as we experienced with um, over the pandemic, that actually an hour and a half service did not work um, offer a live stream um, or even as a pre-recorded service. But actually, you need to understand that things will need to be adjusted and tweaked slightly. 
um, and understanding your audience, the sort of the expectations and the abilities and also the interests. Um, so whilst they, you can take sort of the essence of something or the, the what happens in something, um, but it does just need to be kind of adjusted um, if you're going from one to the other. Though you'll reach more people, I mean, that's kind of a guarantee being online, you won't reach everyone, you won't have a relationship with everyone, and that is absolutely okay. Um, and actually, it was saying earlier about reach, um, whilst the numbers are great to look as like a, a, an, as an indicator for online and for social um, kind of performance or social media performance, the numbers really mean nothing you know lights doesn't mean anything at the end of the day if really you're not helping people to grow and you're not making a change in people's lives so you know whilst you won't reach everyone um actually you it's about sort of the quality and the depth of um who you're reaching um so um roles think about kind of accountability responsibility safeguarding and leadership um so groups or the kind of the management of spaces shouldn't be left to one person so making sure that if you're having groups that there are kind of a handful of people um just kind of keeping everyone safe so i think that's a, that's a really important thing for for online safety and then going into kind of like actually online practices and and, and just being online so um, you know, making sure to consider and encourage good behaviour for online, and that's both publicly, um, you know, as individual users, no trolling or, or, you know, calling out other people for, you know, just because you disagree with them, um, but as well as actually sort of personal use from a, um, uh, from digital practices of, as, as a digital isolation and screen time, so you're not making sure that we're not encouraging um, people to only be online all the time that actually you know part of maybe what happens um within discipleship and community building going actually we really want to encourage people to go out we're having a kind of a quiet time for this afternoon and we're just going to encourage people to go out or you know we want to put, please go out as it's a lovely day take pictures and then we'll come you know share them at the end of the day or something so making sure actually that we're not um fueling to the fire of of um online addiction really is kind of um sort of how I'm I'm, tr I'm trying to see it because I'm guilty of it um at the same time um and the 167 so there are 168 hours in a week and church our life as Christians our growth and our um view of the kingdom needs to go beyond just a Sunday we need to make sure that we're using all the hours of the day well not all the hours but you know <laughs> as much as we can um in, in seeing every opportunity to create disciples, uh, grow the kingdom and spread God's love. Because, you know, as I said, as I started with, Jesus didn't wait until kind of a specific time to, to see as an opportunity to share. Um, so neither should we. So see every opportunity. Faith is a part of our lives and can't be just forced into kind of one point in time, but it does permeate into every um, aspect of our being. Um, and I think, Yes, so um, this is a huge verse that's been for me over the last two years for such a time as this. Could you imagine if we'd have had the pandemic without online? Um, you know, actually what, what challenges, which would have been so much harder. So I think that actually digital is a, is a tool and we should be seeing it as something that we should um, use. Uh, thank you for letting me speak today. I hope that's been helpful. I hope that's challenged you slightly, raised some questions. Um, and yeah, let's just... Um,